That was remarkable and so simple. How much does it take, how long does it take to train a violence interrupter, and what does it cost? Well, let me say this. The, I, I'm glad you're, you're asking this. So there, there's a lot of people involved with this. I mean, there's violence interrupters, and there's outreach workers, behavior change agents, there's community coordinators. It's a system. It's not just, you know, here's 10 um, interrupters, have a good time. It's not like you couldn't immunize in that way or set up a TB program like that. It's a system. And they have, uh, they, the training is continuous. Mm -hmm. It's ongoing. I mean, no one hits the street without 40 hours. And to add to um, all of the complexities here, there's, rec there's recruitment, a lot of care and selection. And then the training and the supervision and the support. And how about tenure? When your experience, do they stay? Yeah. Or do you have turnover? The, there is, uh, this is an amazing thing for me because we have, I have used outreach workers or people from the same field, as it were, in, um, in TB control, in refugee health, and um, in HIV, where we use sex workers to reach sex workers. There's always a lot of turnover. Right. We have not seen that kind of turnover. These guys last. They're highly, highly dedicated, very professional. Do they come from the community? It reminds Absolutely. me of America Brajo here a little bit. You know, yeah. these are like promotores, you know, but they're coming from the community in this sense. They uh, have to be, um, as one of our um, better trainers, uh, among many great trainers, says, you can't train the wrong, the, the wrong worker. So the key step is selection. So there's a whole process for selection here. First, we have to map out the neighborhood, you know, who is involved here, what groups, cliques, or whatever are involved. We need to hire people who know them, people who know them, people who know them, all kinds of, and not just know them, but are trusted by them, are credible, have, um, because we have to get the calls, we have to be able to detect when someone is about to go off. Mm -hmm. And we get these confidential calls. So it's a bit like what the church might have done a hundred years ago where the community was more tightly knit. A, a, a priest might or a, social, a worker from a, a local church might actually know if the neighborhood's about to go off and might be able to understand with a lot more depth. You're replicating that in a social sense with a lot more science. Yeah, and a lot more system. And a lot more system. And a lot more specificity. Mm -hmm. And a lot more accountability. And there's a monitoring system here. So there's a lot of well-meaning clergy and other workers, but this has a specificity of a disease control system. Well, thank you very much, Gary. That was enlightening, and I'm thank sure this community much. learned a lot from it. Thanks, Gary. Thank you.